big domestic market. But again, the performance of airlines of Indonesia is totally different from that of Singapore. As again, Professor Maskin model shows that globalization tends to increase inequality of labor income in poor countries. I think this can be corrected through reorganization of small economic units and through government policies to reduce disparities in wealth and income from capital and land taxation and transfer. This is the role of the government to reduce the uh, 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 rent seeking activities and then also to tax and do transferring. First, to reorganize small farming and SME, SME to allow exploitation of economic sale, mechanization, and thereby raising labor productivity. Second, building strong and solid institutions again. The third one, to reduce economic trend. Fourth, better redistributive impact of fiscal policy. In, in this country, tax to GDP ratio is very slow, very low. Only 13, 40 percent, 10, uh, 13 to 14 percent. With this low government revenue, how can we finance trading and uh, education? How can we finance social sustenance? How can we uh, introduce unemployment insurance? And impossible to have that. Uh, 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 adequate health insurance. And again, this is the key. You have to strengthen and then the tax administration to collect more tax. I think I stop here. Again, I thank you very much for the YouTube paper. Now let me invite uh, uh, Chris Manning to give his comment. Thank you very much, uh, Anwar. Uh, thank you very much, Monica, and the organising committee for inviting me. Uh, uh, and uh, it's a delight to, uh, to uh, speak to uh, uh, Professor Maskin's paper. It's a great honour to be given this opportunity uh, I greatly enjoyed reading the paper. Uh, it's introduced me to a new way of thinking about uh, school differentials and how that might relate to more intensive international economic relationships, commonly summarised under the catch-all catch phrase of globalisation. It's a theoretical paper and I regret I don't have hardly any tools to comment on the more technical aspects of the model. Uh, which are developed in a separate paper with Michael Kramer, I think. Uh, so my comments are really going to be related to some of the empirical uh, aspects of globalisation, particularly with respect to East Asia and, and, and Indonesia. Uh, as uh, Farnwar noticed, uh, noted, the, the paper addresses one of the most important economic and social policy issues of the first decade, I think, of the 21st century that is increasing within country inequality in developing countries. Um, uh, I want to say a little bit about the context of those uh, developments, uh, restate a few of the arguments of the paper, um, add, add a few questions, and then make a few brief comments on Indonesia. First, uh, the context. Uh, I think it's important, at least in this part of the world, to remember that uh, income distribution has not been a key issue in public debates. It's been important, uh, but poverty has been much more important, uh, and income distribution issues have really not only really risen to the fore in the last decade or so in several in many of the countries of East Asia. I'm talking about the globalising, more open economies of East Asia. Uh, the debates aren't nearly as fierce as they've been in Latin America or indeed in the USA. Uh, and in many of the developed countries. Um, uh, 
However, I, I would also suggest that the interest in the problem of inequality has probably grown significantly since the global financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. Um, as in, economic growth rates have fallen in many countries in the region, most notably China, but also in Vietnam. Uh, increases in the wages of the poorest workers that were rising quite fast have now begun to slow, slow significantly. Uh, and as wages have slowed, people are becoming more aware of the widening gap of incomes uh, with better off households. So I think this is the sort of context, at least in the uh, East Asian area, that. Uh, uh, one might think about some of the issues that Professor Muskin uh, has raised. Um, uh, I wanted to make the point that uh, uh, it's not entirely clear from the paper, uh, but, but the, issue, the paper does not really address the issue of whether unskilled workers are better off absolutely or not as a consequence of the, the processes that Professor Muskin discusses. Uh, it's the issue of relativity, it's inequality, that the paper deals with. Uh, but I'd be interested if, if Professor Muskin has any thoughts about, uh, about the absolute uh, uh, incomes. Um, now, in the simplest form of the model, uh, there are four groups of workers, as Professor Muskin mentioned, A, B, A and B workers, the more skilled ones in the developed countries, and C and D workers, the less skill, skilled, but uh, workers in developing countries. And the main argument, I think, of the paper is that the D workers in particular are left out of a globalisation process. The least skilled workers in the developing countries. And this is largely due to the magnitude of the gap in skills between uh, the D workers and the A, B and indeed C workers. The C workers connect with the B workers in developed countries uh, and their incomes rise inequality increases. Uh, so so uh, that's, that, as I understand, is, is the major uh, 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 idea of the model. And there's much more homogeneous matching than cross-matching. Uh, and the model shows that the more skilled sea work